Hello everybody. Welcome to the Matuska Tax Room Supply Company Thursday Live. I'm here with Amber Ingalls and Tom Matuska. Um, Mandy Swart, our producer, is in the background. And Joss is our camera lady today. And um, today we're going to talk about um, European antler mouse. Uh, if you tuned in last week, you noticed that we uh, kind of went over pan pastels. We did a little Halloween thing also with pan pastels and, and latex that was kind of fun. Um, that's been, I think, put on in its full version, which is kind of lengthy. I bet it's about 45 minutes to an hour long. Um, if you ever want to go back and, and uh, do the latex on your, on your face and watch Amber cut into Joe's cheek inadvertently and <laughs> and uh, we had some great, great um, Hollywood effects going on for Halloween. And then for Thursday Live, we did the Pad Pass Fails. Um, Amber showed you how to uh, finish game heads using the, the pastel powders. And for people who are insecure with an airbrush or maybe want a softer look, um, it can be the way to go. Um, I showed uh, people how to paint um, a fish I think I painted. Um, I also painted this turkey head and you can tune in last week's um, segment and kind of get an idea of, you know, those type of things. And any of these things that we show you, um, it's not a black and white, do this, do this, do this, uh, and come up with these results. You're going to kind of morph into your own style and you're gonna come up with uh, a different color red, a different color blue, um, put it on differently and probably come up with better better ideas than what we showed you in the first place. So just because we show you one way, don't you know think that's the only way. There's lots of different ways to do these type of things. So um, when we're talking about Euro mounts or European mounts or European antler mounts, um, basically this is what Sage. what we're talking about. Sage. Oh, this was Mandy's pet deer Sage. One year of his sheds. And I think we've got several around here. Um, this year, because these were sheds, um, this was put on one of our, um, this is our counterfeit, is that what it's called? Counterfeit yes. artificial skull. It has its molars. It's got its uh, teeth in, really, really nicely detailed. And we just took the sheds from our tamed deer and pinned them into this skull. We haven't, we haven't finished the cracks yet, but it's on there super strong. There's a peg system that goes down through there and we'll probably, we've showed you that before in the past couple years ago, maybe a year ago. Um, we'll probably cover that again, maybe next week even. Um, but uh, that's what we refer to with the European antler mount and you can use the real animal skull, which we're gonna show you today. You can use artificial skulls. Which is getting to be pretty popular. It is popular. It like and these things come in, I mean, you can get American flag, um, hydro graphics, if I'm not sure of the term, um, but where it's hydro coated in all kinds of camouflage patterns, pink patterns, um, purple patterns, you know, just about everything, camouflage patterns. We've got some really neat artificial skull patterns that we carry in the supply company and um, they're pretty popular. But that's, that's what we refer to as a European antler, antler uh, European mount, and it can be put on a panel, it can be hung like this, it can be just laying on the floor, you know, depending on what the customer wants. It's a really good alternative for somebody who isn't willing to spend, you know, four, five, six, seven hundred dollars on a full shoulder mount. Um, they can spend one to two hundred dollars for a European mount and still be able to show off their trophy. So these, as as the cost of mannequins goes up and the price of a shoulder mount goes up, these get more and more popular. There's people that do a ton of these, and it doesn't have to be a a deer. Um, we're going to show you today on an elk. It could be a coyote. Now it's not a coyote European antler mount, but it's coyote skull. Yeah. Uh, but it could be a coyote. Uh, just about every bear we do, we do a European skull for the customers. And it can even be something like this Cape Buffalo. This is a European mount for a customer. Um, 
Larry Wiggins says it's not showing up. It's a black screen. You guys, something with technology, it's showing up for me and everyone else, but technology is unpredictable. So like last week, we kind of cut out. If that ever happens live, just get out of the Facebook, get out of our page, go back, and we will be restarted. So you can always find us again, and we'll pick up right where we left off. It'll just have two videos. Um, I see that people are already sharing. Mark Drexler, um, Dustin Door, Kimberly, good work, you guys. And remember, just by sharing, you're in your the winning for a giveaway because we do giveaways every week. We have so. a nice letter from Mark. Drexler, we do have right? a nice. You should probably letter. read that. That's up. Listen to this. Mr. Drexler says, Tom and Amber, I just wanted to take a minute and send a few pictures of the rocks I molded, cast, and painted following your techniques from your Thursday live videos. You both are such great help in taking time out of your busy schedule to share your knowledge. Thank you. The rock casting came at a perfect time for me because of the eiders I had to do better than putting them on driftwood. Um, I'm just a bird guy, so watching every Thursday, no matter what you are sharing that particular day, I can always learn something that will help me. Thank you again for all your help, innovation, and sharing. You're raising the art of taxidermy even higher. Fellow taxidermist, Mark. Thank you, Mark, Thanks, very Mark. much. Wow, thank you. We like those. We do. Yeah. So just remember to share. If you share the video, you're in a chance. We'll choose um, the winner from last week who shared it at the top of the hour. Okay. So stay tuned till the end, because you might have a chance if they don't tune in. Okay. Um, and back to back to the uh, thanks for the interruption. That's a nice interruption. Yeah, it was. Uh, back to the European mounts. There's a lot of different ways to get the meat off. Um, we choose um, cooking them off. We kind of simmer them off. Um, there's the the beetle method. People have beetles. Um, there's maceration where they put it in water and let the bacteria and the little water creatures um, take the meat off. And I don't know, for us, cooking seems to be, um, gets it done fast and does a pretty nice job for us. Uh, European mounts can be messy, they can be dirty, they can be profitable. So if you're willing to get your hands dirty, um, European mounts might be fun for you. Yeah. And uh, what we usually do is, customer will bring in the beer and we will cape it off or take, take what's the remaining of the cape off and before we, cook this skull, um, it's important to get as much meat off as you can. The minimum amount of cooking is going to give you the nicest results. So do you want to grab one and yep. show them what you've done here? Yep. So here's one that we've cleaned off and as you can see just kind of cleaned up all of this area, took off the big stakes that were up around the back of here and down by the eyes. The eyes have been removed. The lower jaw has been removed. And once you do a few of these, it'll get easier and easier and easier um, to be able to remove, especially the lower jaw, because that, you know, once you figure out how it attaches and everything, it gets much easier. And most of the time for antler game, typically we rarely do we put the, the lower jaw on. Yeah. But every now and then somebody does yes. want it, so. And for bears, right. for sure you would. Yeah, yep, yep. Okay, from here, once she's um, she's removed the brains, um, taken the eyes out, um, all the meat off, get them cleaned up. It takes a little bit of time, but it's gonna cut your cooking time down to, you know, probably a fourth of what it would take otherwise. Um, mm -hmm. And then it's time to cook it. Yep. And um, we'll take a, turkey cooker, just like you go up to Walmart right now and they're on sale, a um, little tripod leg turkey cooker with uh, hooks up to propane. Um, don't do it inside. It'll smell like beef stew for a few minutes, but not for long. Mm. Um, do it outside and uh, we, we'll just take a big, we've got a big stainless steel pot, fill it up with water, either hot water will speed up your time. And then we put sal soda. Sal Soda is a product it's we carry in the supply company. And it's, um, we used to buy it in the grocery store called Super Washing Soda, but it's a little, uh, it's sodium carbonate is what it is. It's so, a little grit to it. If, yeah, if you have Sal Soda in your shop, it'll be called sodium carbonate. Do not get mixed up with your sodium bicarbonate when you're neutralizing hides because this will not neutralize your hides like sodium bicarbonate. So you got sodium carbonate, sodium bicarbonate. And so, what does the sal soda do for the boiling? Um, it cuts your boiling time in half. It really tenderizes the meat 
and the meat separates from the bone again much, much, much quicker. Almost gelatinized. Does yeah. a little of that go a long way? Um, what would you say? We'd probably put a half a cup, a half, half a of cup the in seven a, ounce cups in a big contain. You know, I suppose our uh, pot is a three gallon, maybe. How much? Three gallon. Four yeah, gallon. maybe a three or four gallon and pot. And we sell it in two pound and five pound. Goes a long ways. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's the best way you have found to remove the brain? That's Amber's specialty. <laughs> Um, I I actually like using a drill with just a all of you wire hunters and people who aren't used to this type of an occupation may want to not tune out <laughs> tune out tune out during during this part yeah um, it's I mean, not exactly appetizing <laughs> but um, this does work really good I just took a real sturdy wire you don't want to use something real wimpy and then just put a nice little hook on it. It's something that's small enough so that when you go to put this in and out of the brain cavity, it just goes right in and out. And, and then you just go ahead and turn it on. And actually, this one hasn't been done yet, but I'm not going to do it. Okay. So, Show them. Um, um, did that add? Now, you'll notice, oh. if, if any of you have done this before, if any of you have done this before, um, sometimes on your bear, for instance, you get your, your bone all turns nice and white, but you get a big stain up in here. And what that is, is your brain is mostly oil, grease and yeah. fat, and it melts in that hot water and it permeates this bone. So it is important to get that brain out. Your brain will ruin your European mount. Yep. So whip it up, get it out. We take the high pressure hose, we spray it in yep. there. Or even just under the water, you know, whip it up a little bit and then put it under a water faucet and just, just uh, get it out, just put some more water in and dump it and put it, you know, and eventually you'll work it all out to where there isn't anything left in there. What Ray Westfall says, I tried it years ago, I'm assuming he's talking about the sal soda, and it left a white crust on the skull, why? Sometimes um, I've seen it where you get a little bit of white residue up here on the, on like the burrs where the, where the top of the water was, but so it wasn't anything toothbrush major. Toothbrush it off or yep, something. Yep, yeah. just toothbrush it off. Don't use anything real rigid like a wire brush, but just something soft and just brush it and it'll come right off and doesn't seem to affect anything like that. One of my first European mounts ever was a buffalo skull. <laughs> and a buffalo skull is a mammoth <laughs> undertaking because there are no pots big enough to put a buffalo in. And if you do get a pot big enough to put a buffalo skull in, there's no fire hot enough to get your water hot enough. So um, I didn't have a shop, I was working out in my basement. And so I, out in the garage, I found a great big giant roaster and I put a hot plate underneath it. And I turned it up high and I put water in there and I put this buffalo and two days later, it's almost too warm to put your finger oh, in. No. You know? So then I get an electric frying pan because I'm going through the cupboards trying to find anything that'll generate heat. And I've got <laughs> electric frying pan and I've got a hot plate and I've got everything to cook this buffalo skull. Well, parts of it is getting kind of cooked, but the top isn't. So I'm covering the whole thing with tin foil. It was a nightmare. <laughs> you have um, got a story for everything. Do the Tom. right tool for the, <laughs> for the right job. Um, and then we will take this and we will put it in the cell. So let your hot water get hot. Um, I would call it, what would you say, a soft boil? A soft boil, like like it's just rumbling on the surface, you don't want it. Not just... a roiling boil. A yeah. roiling bowl, boil can do damage. And people that that clean skeletons and, and skulls for a living that, that, you know, I knew a lady that did a life-size giraffe. She simmers, they simmer very slow, the bones. That way you don't, you know, do any damage to them. So. I'd yeah, rather go a long time all those with seeds. less heat than really quick and get it done with high heat. Yeah. Um, I would say that, what would you say? An hour and a half? Yeah, yeah, an hour, hour and 15 minutes. And an then, and um, what we like to do is, uh, if you have a power washer, <laughs> Mandy's smiling, so that means messages. Kate, the shakedown, Bloomfield. Hey, Kate. Oh, hey, that Kate. Amber lady says it seems like she knows a thing or two. That Tom guy, too. Miss y'all. <laughs> you can come <laughs> back. He's still rocking your haircut, Kate. I am. Wait that. He is. <laughs> Kate gave me this haircut, and I've had it ever since. You were yeah. the first one to start it, I feel like, in our area. <laughs> no? I don't have enough hair to go as short as she really kind of wanted me to. Um, but, uh, um... When you cook it, make sure you don't overcook it. Um, and then we take it out. And if you're doing something really fatty like a bear or doing multiple skulls, 
change your water often because every little piece of fat on here is gonna to turn to liquid in your water and it's gonna permeate the next skull. So don't try to do a whole bunch in one bucket or one after the other. Change your water often, you'll have way better results. Yeah, it does, it does affect how white you're able to get it in the very end if you're using really nasty water. And then just be careful when you take it out too because of how you turn the skull so you don't have water coming out hot of the water. brain cavity. Yeah, that happened to me. And be careful with that hot water. We've had a few burns around here. Um, so should now, should we show them how to bleach something? Sure. Is that sure. next? Yep. So then as soon as we get done boiling and get it all cleaned up and everything is taken off, um, we keep it in water until we're able to go ahead and whiten. And we just took this one out a few minutes ago and then kept it with a, covered with a damp rag so you can kind of still see that it's still moist here and that's gonna help with the whitening process. You'll get a whiter skull. Sure. And, yeah. and to help get any of the stubborn meat off, mm. um, it's not a bad idea to have a pressure washer. Not a great big you know, $4,000 pressure washer um, Nope. that you can get just a little cheap one from Menards or Home Depot that'll generate, you know, I don't know, 900 to 1,000 pounds of PSI, and that really helps clean up your, your bone and get it nice and clean. That'll Watch for teeth when you dump your bucket. Bare teeth, um, all your teeth are kind of lined with a membrane, so that membrane cooks out also, and your teeth are gonna fall out and be in your bucket. Don't throw the bucket over the bank. Don't throw that, what do they say? Don't throw the baby out with the... Wash you and your sayings. Like <laughs> Does anybody has anybody heard? Don't throw the baby out with uh, what wash water. You guys, <laughs> thumbs up if you heard that. That's a very common saying. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> that's a good point. What Tom was talking about with the water, with the, the 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 teeth coming out in the water. So a lot of times I'll have um, just a fine screen oh, set up over a couple of over From the baby a couple in the wash of. Water? <laughs> yes, buckets, and then I'll pour that water through the screen and it'll catch all that teeth. It'll also catch some of the meat and stuff like that, but you can sit there and sift through it um, because usually on a deer, we'll usually use, we'll usually lose a couple of the little front little deals up in here. Bear, it's really common to lose some of these, some of these here. And we have lost them for good before. In here, these little ones. Them. Yeah, yep. And it's much better to I'm pour it through it. a screen than to have to rebuild it. And then um, use the power washer. That works really, really good to get you a good start. But there are going to be some stubborn spots that aren't going to want to come out. Um, they have a lot of little cavities. As you can see, most animals have a lot of little cavities up in here that are all going to contain and hold that, that meat, and it goes and runs way up into the skull. So some of the tools that we like to use are these little dental picks. That's our hook and probe. Yeah, and these work awesome. Um, this works really good because it's nice and skinny, and it can get down inside of all your little areas to help work some of that meat and be able to catch it and get a hold of it and get it out, as well as up inside of the nose cavity. You can get really, really tricky up inside there so you can really reach in and get all your spots. And then the big long tweezers, because again, you're dealing with stuff that's way up and you can't reach it, so these can reach all the way up into the back without having to struggle to try and get little pieces. And then this little scraper tool is my little go-to tool, um, especially on the backs of the skulls. You're going to come to an area right back in here that it's gonna be really, really gristly on uh, just about everything. Um, and it's terrible gristly and it's, it's really, really difficult. Most of the time a power washer won't even phase it. Um, so this tool can really get in there and you just scrape it and it, it really does get off any of those really gristly areas. And it's just a really, really, really good tool for cleaning. And then this one as well is just another little nice scraping tool, something that you pointed that you can come down and get it down into your little cracks 
different things like that and then another one that you can just take on the side and scrape but you'll you'll figure out your different likes and what works for you but this is what we use the tools to you have a lot of luck because we always get a call the next day what tool were they using so the hook and probe set um comes in a set of two then the preening tweezers and those come in six inch eight inch twelve inch and then the detail tool and then the cheek scraper are the ones you were talking about so yep. those, and probe, and those are those are the nicest thing for preening birds too that red yeah one. yep Yep, uh, yeah, because it's got this one little end here that you can mm -hmm. really get a hold of different things. And we kept this wet. Um, there's a lot of different ways to bleach, bleach skulls. Um, I have seen people put them in straight hydrogen peroxide. And what are you going to say? Eric, um, where can I get those tweezers? Anyone have them? So all the tools you guys see us using in our seminars are available on our website. So if you just go to our website or call us in and we'll have them, but we have those, we sell them in a set of three with the three sizes or individually, but we have a really nice search bar that we have on our website and you just type in preening tweezers, they'll pop up and you can pick them. You type in hook and probe set, it'll pop up and you can pick it. So kind of anything they're talking about, you'll be able to find out. And none, nothing that you showed them is expensive. It's all very, very inexpensive yeah. tools, you know, very reasonable. Yeah, and they'll last forever. You know, this again works good for birds and different things like that. This works great for a lot of different things for all of your game heads. And then this is also used for fish. So these are really multi, mm -hmm. multi-purpose tools. Um, when you were mentioning the, the first um, message that you had, somebody said they did it and had scaly residue or something like that on yeah, there. Yeah, he said it. He still it was sal soda and it, antlers were covered and it still was on the skull. Okay. Um, I used to think, you know, before I ever got into tax I mean, you're trying to do everything you're on your own and you're reading field and stream magazines and, and trying to get some idea of how to do this. And uh, somebody said Clorox bleach. You cover them with Clorox bleach, soak them in that. That does not work. That, that separates the, the oh, surface cool, of the man. bone terribly. And then you get, it flakes off in snow white and gray. Flex. It's oh. very, um, but hydrogen peroxide can be done. 40 volume. Um, if you do it straight, yeah. Otherwise, uh, we have 40 volume, but to add it, to put it on, we're going to mix a um, developer. Is that what it's called? We it's call a, it um, basic white, oh, basic the white, white. powder. And uh, mix it up to like a cake frosting. How's that? You can use your little thing. Yeah. Ray says he likes the t-shirts. Those are also available online and available on pink. Good catch. <laughs> <laughs> and they would make great Christmas gifts. Sure. Christmas is around the corner. We need uh, Christmas music. Oh, you've one. got uh, some great Christmas we sales do coming have up. Christmas stuff coming up, people. So get excited. I like sales. Get excited. <laughs> I'm just going to dump it instead of... Oh, I was talking about the bowl. Now, and be careful not to be doing some real heavy breathing when you dump this powder because it is ultra, ultra poverty and it will, it'll catch you off guard if you get a whiff of it when it's floating around in the air. Um, this is, uh, there's lots of different ways to do this and this is probably one of our favorite ways and it does the nicest job and um, we're going to paint it on. And make it like mm. cake frosting. Yep. Or shaving cream. Kind of. Bill, we do sell the mixing bowls. They're available in four sizes or a kit of all of them. You can find them online. And they're awesome. They really work great for machets, easy cleanup. And then another. I, oops. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. I'm just kind of mixing this in a little bit at a time because that powder is so powdery that it'll take a while for it to really start to take on that water. You don't want to just dump a whole bunch in and then put in way too much. Now it is very, very fumey. So 
if uh, if you are it'll make you sneeze yeah wear, wear a respirator yeah everybody that comes walking through says oh my gosh I can't believe the smell so it is very very Bleachy. very fumey yeah so if you have a problem with with smells do it outside do it in some place that's really really well ventilated but how fumey can it be because they put it on ladies hair it's pretty fumey I can feel it on my eyeballs right now actually what about degreasing <laughs> um, if we degrease um, depends on what it is. If we think we have to degrease, we a lot of times we'll put Dawn in our water when we're cooking. Um, otherwise, soak them in Dawn. Okay, so. If it was something that we absolutely think we needed more, we would probably do a solvent bath like, Pretty, like uh, denatured alcohol or something like that. Most of the time, we don't use anything other than Dawn. Um, our True Bond. Um, what are the numbers of the true bond? Liposol 55 and 77 are both good degreasers um, that you can add to your water. But um, you don't always degrease? Nothing other than nothing other than cooking in clean water. Now there's a little secret to keeping this white and to getting a white skull. I did this for years and I was in a taxidermist shop and uh, his skulls were much whiter than mine and I said, how do you get them so white? Are they painted or what? And he said, no, it's just how uh, how he does it and how they come out for him and in comparing notes the secret is that skull has to remain damp if this skull dries out the bleach does not get soaked up through the pores um, capillary action on that damp skull will will leach that bleach mixture right up into the bone and they'll turn much much whiter do you ever put more than one coat on? Sometimes that discolored area doesn't get totally white like the nose area turns Yes, out. yeah. Mm -hmm. On uh, some animals, I noticed on the skull of this one, we couldn't get him all the way down in the pot because our pot kind of got bent over. And um, we have some discoloration around the antler burrs. I'm going to say that that's going to take two bleachings. Do you see where some skulls that turn yellow after a while, does that mean the fat hasn't gotten out of the skull? wasn't decreased well enough? Quite possibly. There's a lot of different way, reasons that skulls turn yellow. Sometimes people put a coating on them, a polyurethane or something, that the finish might yellow. We put a coating on ours, but we put something on that doesn't yellow. Um, sometimes it's fat in the bone. It just took some time to discolor. And I've heard of people taking and soaking them in like uh, real, real warm, warm water baths with Dawn dish soap sure. to help draw out some of that grease. Dawn out of is the, a good degreaser. Yep, out of the skull. If you feel the need to degrease, like if you were cooking a bear and uh, think maybe you're going to have grease problems, you know, hot water and Dawn will do it. That, yep. That's pretty helpful. The Liposolve um, 5577 will do it also. Did we get any wax paper to set this on? Wax paper? Do you oh. keep the nasal? Inside, yes. Um, but again, that's also part of not over boiling. If you boil it too hard or too fast. Um, the bone, but not the cartilage. Right, right. You, you like to keep the little nasal bones, but if you do it too hard or too fast, they'll just totally dissolve and go away. So you, if you take your time, you should be able to flip it over now then you'll be able to have all of that nasal cavity detail still left inside. So yes, we do. Um, I've heard of a lot of people that don't, and they'll take and drill it out. Um, now, which... there's plenty gone out of there. And that really, really fragile stuff is, is gone. Mm -hmm. Elk are quite a bit different than deer to be able to yeah. boil. For those of you tuning in, you are with Matuska Taxidermy Supply Company, Tom Matuska and Amber Ingalls, and they are showing you European skull, leaching, all that fun stuff. We do live videos every Thursday at 4.30. Make sure we do a giveaway, so stay tuned. We're about ready to announce last week's winner, but if you want to win for next week, if you have a chance, hit the share button and let us know you shared it. There's a lot of people that already did it, and they're in the chance to win. But we have some great giveaways. This week, our giveaways, we have a couple of rock, our artificial rock clusters. We have a habitat base on Walnut Hollow, um, a tape measure, always a must in the field, and a pan pastel set kit. So you have your chance at one of those. So make sure you share the video. And give us some thumbs up, too, because we like that.
and be thinking about price on this too. You know, a lot of people think that um, because it's so much less than a than a full shoulder mount that you should charge. You know, don't charge a lot because it's so easy and they come out so nice. Um, you're going to have a lot of time and a nice Europe, European mount. Um, you're going to have a lot of time. Um, the bleach kit is not. You know, it's not cheap. You know, and you're going to use, I suppose one of these kits will maybe do three deer. And how much are one of those kits? Um, $20 ish? I would say so. Um, and your time. Now, now, think of your time to clean off that skull. How, how uh, much time did you spend getting the meat off of there yesterday, Amber? Mm. I don't know, I bet every bit of 45 minutes sure. to take off the jaw, take out the eyes, do all the cleaning. And, and then we have propane. Mm -hmm. And to cook an elk, we probably had this in there three hours maybe. Mm -hmm. um, so you're running a propane burner pretty wide open for, for three hours. Um, and I think I just got one filled the other day at 20 yeah. bucks or switched <laughs> out for $20. And uh, um, then once it comes out, you're gonna have to clean it up. You're gonna have to use the power washer. Yeah, I thought you were talking about the deer. Actually, for this, it would have taken a little, sure. <laughs> a little bit longer to clean um, okay. this than the white So tail. here's the whitener we were using. is basic white whitening powder. And it's one pound and it's 21, 25. And then the peroxide we carry in quart gallon and a pint online and in the new catalog. And the quart is 650. Gallon is 1895. If you stay tuned till the end of the video, we'll give you a great deal. Um, we also sell, so Amber's using the basic white and peroxide. It's 40 volume peroxide. We actually sell that as a kit as well, together with instructions. So for those of you that want to get the kit, it's 2750 for both of those. Um, and it comes with your instructions, or you can just get either one. Um, we also, for those that want to do just one, maybe you're a hobbyist, maybe it's just something you want to try out. We have these awesome do-it-yourself European antler mount kits. This is original. The deluxe would have a panel with it, but it comes with instructions. It comes with your peroxide, comes with your sal soda, the basic white, gloves, and stir sticks, and a chip brush. So kind of everything to, all you need is your skull and antlers, and you're going to be able to And those will give you real together. professional results. We'll post after pictures. Um, when this is all done and show you guys the after as well. And then you only have a little bit, a limited amount of time before this stuff does start to um, not want to cooperate with what you put on before. It'll try to dry and chunk off. So you only have a little bit amount of time. I'm starting to kind of get to the end of it here where, where it's not wanting to mix in with the stuff I did prior. Um, I'm gonna thin this up just a little bit because it's starting to harden up. And then when you come up around your burrs, just kind of be careful so you don't get any up on your burrs because it will turn it white. So just kind of. Now sometimes your burrs will get down in the cooking water and that'll turn them um, white as well as uh, um, if you cook them too hard, it'll even make them soft. So be a little careful of your burrs. That's another thing, overcooking really, really softens, softens the bone. And you can always come back and touch up those burrs with paint sure. and whatnot. If some discoloration does happen, whether through the boiling or bleaching process. Eric wants to know, would you give advice if I sent some pictures of mine through a PM? We definitely will, sure. Eric. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. And Kate says, go to school, you can learn a lot, which also is available. Northwest Iowa School of Taxidermy, these two are two of your three instructors. It is a great way to learn more and start your career. If you've already done school, you can do advanced classes here too. I think. And this spring, we're running two week classes. Two week classes. On yep. Specified, so if you wanna just come here and learn deer first, or birds, or fish, or whatever. Yeah, they're all broken up into different categories. Did I see, did Kate? Is Kate in the guards now? Did I see that on Facebook? Yes. yes. Yes, we did. Yep. So she can come through on the VA now. Yep. Oh, okay. VA approved. Come we, see us again. We liked Kate here. Yes, we did. <laughs> yes, I really got a kick out of Kate. 
She was we had a class a riot. of five girls, and it was terrifying. Oh, we were <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> and they were the best. Yes. Yeah. Um, Kate does say she wishes you guys had safety glasses on. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Safety first. We do have an eye washer somewhere. Over somewhere. <laughs> in somewhere in here. Safety first. <laughs> And just try, try to kind of do a once-over looking at everything and make sure that you're not missing it. I'm coming around to this side because I was doing it from the opposite. So I'm trying to make sure that I'm not missing any spots. It doesn't have to be really built up heavy in order to do the trick for whitening. So it's not like you have to have big blobs and globs of this stuff hanging off all over the place. That's... And if something, if you missed a spot, um, there's nothing stopping you from coming back and doing it tomorrow. Right. You can add, you can hit the weak spots, do a little more and touch them up. And it's kind of nice if you have more than one skull to do so that you don't waste what's in your bucket. You can, you know. I actually came out right. You did good. Right on it. Nice work. Um, now we'll leave this overnight. Sure. Um, I like to, I like to leave it just like mm -hmm. that. And this will dry and it'll start falling off. And then we like to take it over to the sink. We have a spray hose and we spray all, the, all of it off because you don't want any up in the nasal cavity that's gonna fall off on somebody's tablecloth or counter or carpet. You know, <laughs> your brand new carpet, bleach. Do you guys get worried about getting your bleach? Everyone's saying um, to tin foil or tape the burrs. Do you get worried about getting that on or you're we just such a good painter, you're not scared yeah. of it? Yeah, yeah. If if we would ever happen to get any up on there, just with a little artist brush and some light tone some paint or light tone lacquer or paint, wax stain. Your favorite was yep. a cocoa. Was yeah, that for the yeah. I like the cocoa. The, um, a lot of times down around the bottom, it'll be a dark dark brown. So you could use dark brown or also some of that rusty color. So rich brown also works down in there too. Sure. We gotta announce our winner from last week. So the winner from last week, you have 10 minutes to chime in, let us know you're watching to choose your giveaway, but it is Danny Leach. So Danny Leach, let us know if you're watching so you can pick your bag. Otherwise it'll go to the next one. And if they don't, it'll go to somebody live. Um, these winners aren't very good at checking in the next week. Some people can't watch live. They're busy with work and it's not 4.30, it's 5.30 everywhere, you know. <laughs> 5.30 somewhere, but not here. Um, one question on pricing. So what would your standard price for Whitetail Euro with, for example, a $40 plaque? Just curious. I hear everything from $50 to $150 plus, not counting a pant, a plaque. 150 I think we're plus. One, yeah. Um, I think we're one. I might be wrong. 165 um, without the panel, yep. possibly. And there's a whole big selection of panels. If you look in the catalog, I don't know. We got lots of different Euro panels. Yep. Um, what Rem a, remember too, when you're when you're considering your pricing, um, not all people that are planning on doing in Europeans bring them in to you really fresh. Sure. So don't think that, that you're gonna get in this nice fresh deer skull because most of the time it seems like they bring you the ones that have been sitting around for a long time and it's we had not We that sat around for a year or something and they were surprised that we complained. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not pretty. So take that into consideration when you're trying to figure out how much time it's gonna take you to do it because yeah, chances are you're gonna be dealing with not the freshest products. You know, and another alternative, if somebody wants a panel, um, this is quite easy, relatively speaking, compared to putting this on a panel mm -hmm. for the wall, because to put it on a panel, we have to be able to fasten this to the wood, and that's not easy. No. And we'll usually take a piece of plywood and we will epoxy it to the roof of the mouth in between the molars, paint it white, shape it so it can't be seen, blend, it in. Um, blend yep. the seams and everything like that, just so we have something to screw to, and that's a two hour process right there. So that, putting something on a panel is not just a matter of putting, <laughs> putting it on a panel. I get Mandy's eye looks every time she gets a message, it's pretty No, <laughs> mine is a smell. Um, <laughs> People are asking about the catalog. Is that the new catalog I see? It is not. Oh no, the you new wait. The catalog is. You are gonna be awestruck by the new catalog. You got two weeks, mm -hmm. people. Two weeks till it'll, it'll be in your hands, but you can go online and see the 2018. We have a flip book, online flip book that you can look at, but it should be in your hands in a couple weeks, hopefully right around Thanksgiving. And it's awesome. Yeah. It is, it looks very nice. Very excited. And here. Jesse Wells, 
I'm not sending you one. You will get one when you come to school. <laughs> uh, this is another alternative to an expensive, you know, hardwood hanger. This is a sportsman's trophy hanger and it can either be screwed to the back of the skull, we usually don't. They come with, um, they come in several different sizes. You got like small, small medium, medium large. large, and then they have a uh, plastic hose thing that slips over here, depending on the size of your brain hole, it goes up into your spinal cord hole and screws onto the wall. It's kind of rubbery for a grip, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yep. No, they work really good. They don't try to tip or turn or do anything uh, like that. I mean, they, how much are these? They're under 10 bucks, I bet. $12 yeah. maybe. Um, but it just takes a nail on the wall and there it sits it at a up. really attractive angle. Yeah, yeah we Compared do to quite a, $50, a few of those. We do a lot of these. I mean, I give them. If somebody, if somebody says, oh, I don't know what I want to do, um, I will give them one of these free, and it the makes the sale, the sale right there. Mm -hmm. Heavy duty, heavy duty. And then we had, we had uh, something with some they're talking about. Them. That's the sportsman's trophy no. hanger that they're sure. talking about right here. I don't think so. And it's yeah. the <laughs> bear deer for ten ninety five. Okay, we got it's another very scenario for you. Every once in a while, you'll have somebody come up and they'll say, um, I want a Euro mount and um, my antlers are in velvet. Can you do that? And then, oh my gosh, it boggles your mind. How are you going to do that? If you send it to somebody to beetle clean it, the beetles are going to eat all the velvet, which will ruin it. If you cook it, the steam and the hot water is going to ruin all the velvet, so now you're in trouble. Um, our our method for doing that, you can grab that one, we have a little um, mule deer here. Our method for doing that, I'll take and cover it up, is, <laughs> is, to, is to cut the horns off of the skull, treat the skull just like we would any other skull for cleaning it up, and then we're gonna pin the antlers back on and fix the seam. So there's more work involved, but um, it's a, the best way to do it, I think. Sure. Um, I'm gonna get a piece of paper and a pencil, and we're gonna need a little tape. Can we borrow your tape? What? Your tape measure? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't get dirty, it's gonna go to somebody someday. Everyone wants a catalog, and you will get your, um, Eric, if you've ordered from us before, you will be on the list automatically. If you've requested a catalog before and haven't got it because we are out, you will be on the list automatically. If you have never ordered from us or have not requested a catalog, send us your address and we will make sure you're on the list for it. Now, what I would do is make a little sketch like Amber's making. Um, it'll be easy to know where the burrs go compared to the pedicles. From tip to tip on the main beams, I'm gonna say 10 and, 10 and a quarter inches. And let's go for the nine inches on the backs. So 10 on the front, nine on the back. And then, The scary thing is... Don't some, be looking at my drawing too hard. <laughs> the hmm. scary thing is cutting somebody's horns off. That's kind of scary, right? It is. Okay. It is. You hold them and I'm going to cut. Um, um, you can also measure from... You could go from the car knuckle. You sure. could go from any really point on to the, the skull tip to, to the them. tip to be able to make sure you're getting them tipped right if you're worried about tipping them too far forward or too far back. And we're not, or we take think, pictures. We think we're good at that. You know, pictures would be great. Yeah, take a camera, get some pictures. Um, but you got to have something so that you know and what you're doing when you like go that. to put it back. right at the base of the
no blade to just have something that's just real it's nice. Smoother. Yeah, be a um, little bit more gentle. You can see it's not real chewed up. It's not. Um, you guys ever want to cut off um, deer crazy. antlers easily off your skulls for full shoulder mounts? Um, this, these are Milwaukee blades. It's the axe, and that cuts a skull faster than anything Ooh. in a sawzall. I mean, it cuts really good. But yep. for something like this that we're going to try to put together kind of precisely and not have it show, um, we like something a little smoother. So let me try this one. has not chimed in so we're gonna pass it over to Diana Dawson so Diana Dawson if you are watching chime in and let us know so you can choose your prize your giveaway otherwise it's gonna go to one of the 226 lucky live viewers Ooh. yeah that's a lot isn't oh, it? that is a lot seems like a lot and then after that now we'll just go ahead and proceed to clean up and remove and the treat eyes it just like like a euro yep. mount and we're gonna take the bottom drop off, off. Um, take the eyes and the brains out we're gonna Cook it, make it snow white, bleach it, and then come back. We will pin these. The biggest thing is make sure you get the right one on the right side and the left one on the left side, right? Right. <laughs> um, and we'll pin them, and with a little creative epoxy work, um, you're never going to know that those were ever separated. It's going to be very strong. Um, it's probably the only way I know to do Euro mounts that are in velvet. And then if these were these were later in season kind yeah, of velvet, yeah, yeah. so if they were early season mm -hmm. kind of velvet, we'd have to freeze dry we'd them. We'd have to freeze dry them. So uh, if they're still bulbousy and really fluidy up at the tips and really full of that that tissue feel, you're gonna want to freeze dry. We get a lot of velvet um, questions, and velvet is just like a animal when when velvet gets warm it decomposes and the epidermis starts sloughing off and you know if it's if it's a real soft velvet they will squish back and forth this one is dried down enough that uh, the skin does not move on the bone and if you can inject it with our antler velvet tan that works good but if you can't um, get a needle under there then just let them dry right we did some elk that we have we've got a uh, some monster monster elk and we injected a lot of antler and velvet tan all throughout the whole elk antlers and they are now drying and when they dry um, that velvet will be nice and stuck on but sometimes if they're you know big and bulbous you got to freeze dry them and even these, as stiff as what they kind of look, they, they do feel soft enough. I think we will be able to inject. Turpentine? Turpentine works great for preserving early phases. Yeah. Turpentine works great for preserving early phases. Sure. Sure. Um, I've also heard uh, denatured, denatured alcohol. Denatured alcohol because it dries so fast. Denatured alcohol or acetone, yep. dry, it, they dry really, really fast. Yep. You guys are getting in trouble for your safety, just saying. For safety, you guys might want to wear a surgical mask so you don't get your bone dust in your lungs. Just want you guys safe. <laughs> oh wow! I've yes. got more yes. than bone dust in my no. lungs. <laughs> <laughs> Not laughing at it. We should. Yes, you are one hundred percent right. Very important. How's our winner? Winner. Nobody's chiming in, so Rob, keep that quiet. Um, no one is chiming in, so let's pick a number. Amber, you're probably going to keep that, huh? Here, you pick what? a number on your little sheet there. Oh, here. Where nobody can see. There you go. You just show me. So, for all of you lucky viewers, start okay. guessing a number 1 to 30. And the first one that we see, keep in mind... 
we get them at a different time than you put them in because they come through a lot in a couple minutes. So, one through 30, start guessing the number. The first one that we see will get a chance to win one of these awesome prizes, your pan pastel kit, your tape, unused tape measure. Oh. <laughs> or um, the rack or the base. So, oh geez. They already got it. Jesse Wells. Congratulations. That fast? It. That was fast. You did get wow. it. Wow. So good. Work, remember to share. You guys, so you have time. So remember to share the video, you guys, for your chance to win next week. Um, we'll let Jesse pick his bag here, but. Share the video and you will be fast. in. You don't have to share it live too. So if you're watching um, Friday, Saturday, Monday, whatever day you're watching up until Thursday, we will still pick, put you on the list for sharing the video. So make sure you do that. You can keep talking while I get talking. Yes. Yeah. Does that need to be in there? Or did you grab it? What? Do you need that? One? Yes. <laughs> um, remember the last few weeks we were talking about habitat? This is a habitat we made. Um, rocks, moss, grasses, weeds, dirt. That makes a really nice little display for some of your, say a little coyote skull like this. You can wedge it down in the... Oh, that's cute. In the, mm -hmm. Maybe you can wedge it down in there. Um, maybe add some little vines, you know, wound around through it. Those natural um, sceneries look really cool. In fact, don't we have um, one of them that you had shown with a European whitetail on one of them, on one of our rock faces that fit um, in the oval? In the catalog, I believe, in I the catalog. Yeah. I mean, look at this. Newly revised wall mount. I'd take that. <laughs> With now my look sage. at look at okay. my baby. Pour a little sage here, and wedge him in here, creatively. I got a little barbed wire. Have some little grasses and vines up there. Maybe a little moss growing on him. Yep. Um, that would make a really, really, really attractive mount. And I'm thinking you're probably looking at thirty to forty some dollars for this, maybe seventy, fifty, <laughs> seventy. <laughs> <laughs> And, <laughs> and uh, a year amount, that would be way attractive, I think. Would be, yeah, very way, way attractive. Yep. All right, grab a bag, you people. Jesse will let you pick. You got Tom, Amber, Mandy, or Joss's bag here, who's holding the camera. So pick your bag, and we will let you know what you got. Anyway, um, so next week you guys are going to continue on, I think. I think we're going to do a little more. We're going to work with some of the camouflage hydro-coated yep. skulls. We'll have this one all cleaned up and whatnot. And we'll show you how to do that. Ready to be reattached to the whitened skull. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. They picked you? He picked me. Yeah. What do you have? I know, I got a piece of paper. Well, That's the paper, because I, I can't fit the rocks in. Oh, I was like, oh. what is with the paper? Last time I threw water. If I didn't know oh, I know. You had the base, you had the rock. Oh. So the tape measure or the pan pastel kit is your choices left. And I had the pan pastel oh, kit, ah. Jesse. So you will get that sent. Nice. And I'll throw in an old catalog <laughs> for you. So congratulations, Jesse. Make sure to share the video, like it. Um, comment, let us know what you think. You can always go to our Facebook page and review us and tune in next week. Oh, sale. Sale. We are going to do, now till Sunday, 60% off peroxide. What? I know. Crazy. Oh. We <laughs> talked to them and they're giving us a deal. <laughs> Cindy ordered what? too much. <laughs> so, what? so. Go. I that did. Stuff's expensive. I forgot to tell Kirsten, so you're gonna have to either put it in your comments of your um, order. online order, or let the girls know. But we're gonna do sixty percent off, and we'll oh, do yes. it. Yep, quarts, pints, and gallons of the forty volume peroxide that we carry. So it's a heck of a deal. Cindy over ordered, so we'll blame it on her. So it's your. She does luck. this once a year. You know that. <laughs> Always. We try to keep stock for the busy time. 
So make sure to grab that. Um, the basic white was also what they're using, so you can throw that in too. Um, but let the girls know and they'll help you with your order. And tune in next week. Yeah. Thanks it's for around. tuning in. Thank you, everybody. See ya.